I thought I'd make a quick video here, kind of in response to the original video I made with the unboxing of this turbo kit, because there's a lot of people that didn't watch like the whole build series and see all the ordeal that just went through. So here's your general once over of the $699 eBay small block Chevy turbo kit. So this thing's all installed and running for as good as it does. So let's start with the driver's side here. This driver's side header, um, I'm assuming whoever made this didn't make the passenger side because this side's pretty decent. Uh, on like a lot of small block Chevy headers, like you can get the plugs in and out pretty well. The bolt's all clear. There's no shenanigans. I had to notch the frame right there for this one tube. But the square body trucks that this is in, this is in a 73C10 for those who don't know. Uh, they're kind of odd because the engine bay is enormous. But the frame rails, the width is actually like pretty narrow on them. So that it might not happen in other cars where you get to notch the frame. It's just a kind of weird situation here. Now this header goes to a crossover pipe which goes under the oil pan. I can loosely show you here. There you go, that chromey thing right there. So that goes under the sump in the pan, and here's where all the trouble starts. So that should bolt into the bottom of the passenger side header, which you really cannot even see except that little bit right there. And it doesn't fit. So yes, one side of the turbo kit does not fit the other side. They both came in the same package and they don't fit themselves. And no, it's not like half an inch. It's like three inches off. Where I believe that the manifold was actually like the dump for it's back here. And that pipe came up like over here. So yeah, that was kind of interesting. So I had to remake the piece that joined them. I had to make like an S to do that. And there was other problems where even moving that forward, it still interfered with a factory size starter. I had to put a mini starter on it, which the factory size, I can wander over here and show you on this motor. Actually, there's one right here. So there's your standard giant small block Chevy starter. What I did was I put a mini starter on here from like a 94 Chevy truck and that fixed that problem. Now the other fitment issues. Right here at the base of the turbo where it goes the manifold, is a spacer. It's kind of hard to see because it's all rusted up, but this piece is extra, did not come in the kit. It is needed because when you bolt everything on there, the turbo actually hits the valve cover right there. That spacer I bought extra to prevent that. Funny thing about that is these are just bone stock valve covers. They aren't even tall ones. In fact, they're shorter than even like your standard aftermarket chrome valve cover. So if it hits this, it's gonna hit like every valve cover. So I don't know what they were intending there. And I had to move the alternator in a little bit too, just in the adjustment. This bolt should normally be like somewhere out here. So shorter belt, so you can still see it's pretty close right there. So we're already at a few steps here why this thing doesn't even fit a motor in remotely. It has to be modified. Then if you watch the hot rod uh, video on this, because they did a video on this turbo kit too, uh, right here is where the included wastegate should mount, and I have that blocked off. I originally had it mounted, so I had the frame hacked out here too because the wastegate hit that. But then I saw in their video that if you run that wastegate, you're going to blow your motor up because it's poorly located and it's too small. I think it's a 38 millimeter wastegate, and once the GT45 turbo actually starts spooling up, that thing can't bleed off enough pressure. To actually you regulate your boost at all. So I had this big 60 millimeter wastegate put directly onto the, uh, the exhaust housing there, the turbo. And that does a really good job of regulating it. I have no issues with that. But that will ruin your day if you know you put use their stock wastegate. I also had to have this pipe shortened right here. This was probably another like three inches longer because it ran right into the fuel pump. And I know most people won't have a problem with that because I'm an idiot. I'm running a mechanical fuel pump 
where most people would run an electric fuel pump, but it's still something else to consider. But the biggest issue on this passenger side manifold, because yes, those aren't even the worst, it gets worse, is that it doesn't even fit the head. I had to oval out a few of the holes. There's a combination of bolts, like I have like Allen bolts and large head bolts and small head bolts all throughout this side, depending on where the pipes are. Spark plugs don't fit. I had to hammer the tubes. I had to run short plugs in some cylinders and regular plugs in other cylinders. And then you pretty much have to have put the plugs in before you put the header on. So now when you foul the plugs out, which you'll do turning a, uh, tuning a turbo engine, you're gonna end up fouling plugs, especially with a carburetor. It's like a two hour ordeal to pull this crap off and have to change the plugs and then bolt it back on. So that makes tuning wonderful. Driver side plugs, no issue at all. And then also because that thing's not placed right, I mean, if you wanna do anything with this valve cover, it's a complete joke. Can't adjust the valves. I mean, hell you can when we put oil in it. The oil fell on that side. So yeah, that's a complete joke. And then the other issue with this kit is that the included oil feed for the turbo, this plate right here, it has a restriction in it and the restriction is too small. And I blew up the turbo included in the kit after, I mean, probably less than an hour of runtime due to oil starvation. So this is a new turbo. It's the same turbo that came in the kit. It's another just generic $180 GT45. But now I've hogged that hole out to like an eighth inch in that feed, and now there's no more issues. So if you run the parts they give you with the kit, you'll blow up the turbo they give you in the kit. So this is really just all hodgepodge together. And then the other issue, but this is, isn't really the kit's fault, but I've seen a bunch of people buy these in a bunch of Facebook groups. They put them on their vehicles, trucks, whatever, then you never see them post about it like ever again. And I'm assuming it's because they didn't do anything to their fuel system to modify this, to have a turbo blowing through it. You have to have a modified fuel system. I've done modifications to this carburetor for blow through and I'm running a boost reference fuel pump because you have to raise the fuel pressure proportionally to your boost pressure. If you blow 10 PSI of air into that carburetor and you only have 6 PSI of fuel pressure, the air is going to push the fuel basically out of the carburetor or out of the actual the mixture. And you're going to turn the innards of your motor in the lava flying out your exhaust pipe pretty quickly. So I think a lot of those guys that install these kits make about one hot pass down their street and suddenly their, their rods are hanging out of the block and they give up on turbocharging after that point. So I haven't blown this thing up yet. And if you've seen how it runs, that really says a lot. This thing hasn't grenaded. But other than that, I mean, that's a lot. That's what you're looking at with this kit. So if I want to summarize it, you're better off just making your own manifolds. Because the only thing usable in the entire kit is the driver's side header, which is basically nothing more than your standard like mid-length tubular header. You can probably buy a pair of these on eBay for like $80. And the $180 turbo. Everything else in the kit's useless. It's the wrong oil feed. doesn't even come with an oil drain. And the passenger side header is completely useless. So you can save yourself the $699 and just buy that $180 turbo and maybe another $100 worth of crap in the kit, like the oil feed line and all that. And then just somehow fabricate your own turbo manifolds or source them somewhere else. So there you go. Hope that was helpful to anyone attempting to buy this thing. And basically, in abbreviation, don't.